Venezuelan police use water cannon to quell anti-government activists outside the Supreme Court. We'll discuss what's behind Venezuela's political and economic crisis and how the country moves forward. Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C., and this is The Heat. For six weeks, hundreds of thousands of protesters have spilled onto the streets of Caracas to demonstrate against the government of President Nicolas Maduro. At the same time, there have also been large pro-government marches in the capital. The protests were triggered by a decision by the Venezuelan Supreme Court to strip power from the National Assembly. The opposition held Congress. That decision has since been reversed, but not before the damage was done. We begin our coverage with CGTN Stephen Gibbs in Caracas. And Stephen, we've seen almost daily protests in Venezuela. What is the opposition hoping to accomplish? Well, I think its stated objective is uh, to have full presidential elections, to restore the authority of that Congress, to have political prisoners released here, basically to bring back what they think uh, have been lost here, which is the democratic norms. But another thing is going on, and I think the key point that the opposition is making is, is demonstrating its support. I've counted 35 protests here in Caracas uh, and across the country for the last six weeks, and they are getting out hundreds of thousands of people. And this is in a context of a government that says it represents the people. And of course, for many years of Chavismo, the leftist governments here, that was what the, they were the masters of, bringing out these mass mobilizations under the years of Chavez of so many people. So that's a powerful message. And the other key thing that the opposition is doing is it's every day confronting the security forces, not the army, but the National Guard and the police. And they are pretty open about what they are hoping by that confrontation. They are hoping that they can flip uh, one part of the security apparatus of this country to the opposition side. We're not saying that's going to happen or it's close to happening, but it is the ambition of the opposition. And that, of course, would change everything. Right now, President Maduro recently announced the creation of a new uh, popular assembly, and that would have the ability to rewrite the Constitution. How is that being received? Well, to a certain extent, it depends who you ask. Uh, most surveys say that 75% of the people here are against the Maduro government and 25% in support. So the 25% of the, of the population that support what the government say, particularly the, the sort of more radi radical ideologues uh, within that group, they support it. They say this could be an opportunity to take the revolution, as they call it here, uh, another step towards perhaps the sort of assembly situation you have in a country like Cuba. Now, the opposition say, you know, this is a trick. They say we've got a perfectly good democratically elected assembly. It's called the National Assembly. It was voted uh, in 2015. It became an opposition majority. And since then, the government has ignored it. So they sort of say they call out the Maduro government for uh, doing a trick, as they say it, for, you know, not accepting what one elected assembly does and therefore creating another. So uh, while the government says this is an attempt to solve the problem, uh, the opposition, which is in the majority, says it's just all more divisive. Right. Now, Stephen, Venezuela is a major oil exporter. And since the fall of crude oil prices in 2013, it's been in an economic freefall. What are conditions like for most Venezuelans? <laughs> Uh, pretty bad, um, particularly, unfortunately, the poorest Venezuelans. They're the ones that are suffering the most. Now, if you go around the country, particularly here Caracas, you won't necessarily see those enormous queues that we saw last year for products uh, because the government, to a certain extent, has half solved that problem. But what we are seeing is the beginnings of hyperinflation. Uh, the IMF says that the, the, the prices here may well go our inflation rate may well go above 2000 next year. And you see that the whole time. People say, OK, yeah, there may be products here, but how can I possibly buy that? And then there are still shortages of some key things, including medicines. And this is dangerous for the government because what's happening is there's a combination of, of the opposition leadership saying, look, we need to restore proper democracy here. And they've also got the support of the people that may not care 
particularly what the National Assembly does or doesn't do, but does feel the crisis in terms of their everyday lives because of the economic situation. And the problem for the government is when those two forces unite, the, the people that feel the poverty they're really experiencing and the sort of organized opposition uh, with support from the outside world saying, look, Maduro, you've got to bring back democratic norms to this country. OK, thanks, Stephen. That's CGTN Stephen Gibbs reporting from Caracas. Joining us now from New York is Eva Gollinger. She's an international attorney and author of The Chavez Code, Cracking U.S. Intervention in Venezuela. From Toronto, we're joined by Maria Perez victor She's the chair of the Canadian, Latin American and Caribbean Policy Center. Here with us in the studio is Juan Gonzalez. He served with the U.S. State Department for 16 years and is currently an associate vice president with the Cohen Group. And Danny Bahar is a Venezuelan economist and fellow with the Global Economy and Development Program at the Brookings Institution. Maria, let me start with you. As we just heard from our correspondent, these protests have been going on for about six weeks now since the beginning of April. What do you believe is behind these demonstrations? Well, what you are seeing is a soft coup. What you are seeing on the streets are conspirators. These are people that what they want is to overthrow the government of uh, President Maduro. Uh, they are portrayed uh, in the mainstream media as freedom fighters and uh, legitimate opposition uh, people. But in fact, most of them uh, are mercenaries. They have been paid. What we see is a war that is being carried out on the backs of the people of Venezuela. Uh, the opposition is, is composed of about 17 parties. Uh, and not all of them, of course, uh, agree with the, the, the violence that's going on on the streets. But unfortunately, it has been the extremists among them who have uh, been able to dominate. And they are backed by very powerful, external forces. It is impossible to understand what is happening in Venezuela without understanding that there is foreign intervention occurring. OK, let me go and to let me go to Danny on this. Danny, is this what we are seeing here, a soft coup, an attempt to overthrow the government by paid mercenaries? No, I think I think what we just heard is a little bit of a, it's a repeated propaganda from the government. And it's, it's a little bit of fiction that has been going on for years. Um, and, and the best way to, to, to look at it is just to look at the numbers. This government has a 10 percent approval rating, and that might be overstating it. 90 percent of the Venezuelan population is in discontent with this government. And that's just a plain number, but let me tell you a little bit more. This government um, that started with Chavez and Alvaro Maduro are responsible for the huge humanitarian crisis that is undeniable that is going in the country. 75% um, of Venezuelans have lost up to 10 pound, 10 kilograms, sorry, um, because, they're, they, because there's hunger, there's a scarcity of goods, uh, basic medicines, people are dying in hospitals from preven preventable diseases. And this government response has been to do everything in their power to stay on power. And when I say everything in their power, I mean it. So they have destroyed independence of powers. The only independent power that is left in the country is the National Assembly, who in the, in the last election that was held um, a year and a half ago, the, the opposition won by landslide. Two thirds of the Congress is in the hands of the opposition, but what the government did is to use the Supreme Court, which is under their control, to delegitimize everything the Congress has been doing. There are elections that should have happened last year, regional elections that have been put on hold. Um, there was a call for a, refer for a recall a referendum that, was, uh, that is allowed in the Constitution that was also put, in, put on hold. And the only reason that these, two, uh, that these elections have been put on hold is because the, no gov the government knows that they're going to lose them. Right, OK. So this is, a, this is not a favor to the Venezuelan people that just to give this election. These are constitutional rights. So All the right. people Let me are in... going out and protest about right. this. Right. Let me bring in Eva from New York. Eva, uh, just to the last point that... Uh, Danny made about this being an attempt by the government, a power grab, if you like. Nicolas Maduro wants to create a new super body or constituent assembly with powers uh, to rewrite the constitution. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Venezuela can decide if Venezuela wants the violent, terrorist ones 
or if the people want peace and prosperity. Venezuela, the decision is in your hands. In the next few weeks, we will have elections. You wanted elections, you will have elections. You wanted to vote, we are going to vote. You want a dialogue? Here, have a constituent assembly. So, Eva, there we have the president's view there. And what would you say to critics who say that this attempt to create this constituent assembly is actually aimed at keeping the socialists in power in what would effectively be a biased assembly? Well, I think that the government is struggling to find a solution to the crisis that's overcome Venezuela. And, uh, you know, the government of Nicolás Maduro has been trying to engage in a dialogue with the opposition, but the leadership of the opposition in overall have been unwilling to participate in that dialogue for numerous reasons that they have given to justify, you know, just taking to the streets in protest and in a clear attempt to overthrow the government. I mean, that's their final goal. That's why some of their leadership, including the president of the National Assembly, the parliamentary body, was just recently in Washington, D.C., in the White House, meeting with the National Security Advisor, meeting with Vice President Mike Pence, asking for their direct aid in removing <laughs> Nicolás Maduro from power. I mean, that's really the end game here, and it's been the end game for a long time. I think it's important to recognize that. At the same time, you know, the, the government of Nicolás Maduro at this time must take responsibility for a lot of the situation in the country, the difficulties that Venezuelans are facing. So I do believe that they're struggling for a way out of the crisis. Dialogue has failed with the opposition. Um, elections were put on hold. You know, the, there's been a numerous reasons given for why they've been put on hold. Nonetheless, you know, there should be elections held in the country, regional elections for governors, for mayors, as well as next year presidential elections. So there is concern amongst, you know, those who oppose the government that this constituent assembly redrafting or a new constitution will obviously put on hold any future electoral process, or at least in the near future, right. and is buying time for the government. But I do believe that it is, there is a genuine attempt. You know, the government is not just going to give up power. It's an elected government. Whether yeah. or not they have a 10 percent approval rating, it's still a legitimate government. And I think the bottom line is that there's a leadership in the opposition that's, ex that's extreme, extremist and reactionary, and they've been unwilling to engage in a direct dialogue. And it's been a deaf dialogue on both sides. And there really needs to be a moderate voice that arises from this crisis to try to find a way out, because as, as the other guests have said, you know, it's the immense majority of Venezuelans who are paying the price.